faculty, parents, students, esteemed guests, present clergy, Mr. Rosenthal, I thank you for your warm welcome and for being here today. I wanted to discuss my school and my class at Collegiate, but this is neither the time nor the place. <laughs> it is with great honor that I make my speech as your valedictorian. It looks like my hard work paid off. Today I want to talk about a few groups of people that make Collegiate so special, because it certainly isn't the old building. First, I want to talk about our teachers. My class would not be sitting here, headed to the fantastic places we're going next year, without our teachers. The curiosity, the energy, the faith, the devotion, the tolerance that you bring to this school is what makes it so great. Dr. Clark Turd taught us history and herstory. <laughs> Dr. Bresnik, Ms. Beresford and Ms. Hansen have introduced us to characters and explored philosophy. Ms. Foley has taught us, well, really only the smart kids, <laughs> how to understand things that I never will, and Dr. Sigismondi has brought us all to appreciate the high levels that math has to offer. <laughs> thank the maintenance staff and those administrators who make our school run smoothly despite the mess we make. We understand that we do not come by the strength and unity of our school by ourselves. Our teachers encourage us just as much as we encourage each other to get weird. <laughs> In what other school, I ask you, could El Haj and Todd Layton be clapped off stage for no apparent reason? <laughs> The things we say on Friday night games would not be tolerated on any TV show or in any public venue. And although sometimes, and, al and although some are more lenient than others, hola senor, each teacher entertains our absurdity because they understand how important it is for us to be ourselves. Sometimes we go too far, hola mis adieu. <laughs> and for this we apologize, but we are forever grateful for the love and support of our antics. On a different note, Collegiate has provided me with something truly irreplaceable. A second set of parents, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth, and I think this is true for all of us. While my mother and father provide me with more than enough parenting, who would want 54 other sets of parents watching over their every single move? <laughs> you, the Collegiate parents, are what makes this day possible. You have each raised one of the greatest children of all time. <laughs> You've dealt with us during the most stressful time in our lives. You have helped each other through hardships. You have taught us so much of what we know. And we can only hope one day to grow up to be nothing like you. <laughs> Surprisingly, now I would like to say a few words about my class. For many of us, Collegiate has been our life since the age of five. That's 13 years, or 91 in dog years. Looking at you, Bresnik, you dog. <laughs> uh, probably the longest time any of us will ever stay in one place. So, condense with me, if you will, those 13 years into a time span of but a week here at school. On Monday morning, under this standard, we arrived at school. Some of us potty trained and some of us not quite there. Bresnik, you dog. <laughs> and began our collegiate careers. Things started fast that Monday morning. Star Sawyer introduced us all to the language of love. Abby Newland renamed Pinsky, Mikey, but soon left due to a job opening at Oprah's famed girls' school in South Africa. <laughs> Wait, that was a different blessing in disguise. Uh, K1 ran train on K2, a trend that has since continued. And that afternoon, after nap time, we entered first grade. Sadly, Elliot Snyder overslept and missed moving up to <laughs> Under the reign of Beth Pashlik, our serious academia began. We counted and estimated the number of peanut M&Ms in a jar, getting our first proverbial nut. <laughs> <laughs> then, Miss Hutchinson met Andrew Newhouse, and it took her less than a month to literally hit the roof after his contagious laughter got the better of our entire grade during an assembly featuring several videos of sumo wrestlers. <laughs> that afternoon, we went home, entirely unsuspecting of the rude awakening that Tuesday morning and second grade would bring us. Second grade was a roller coaster of a year, let me tell you. 
I had my first kiss, and no, not with Martha Mayasaka, as the legend suggests. Instead, it came from the wonder from down under, Miss Bryden, on Christmas Eve. We went on mini trips and hit all of New York's hotspots. Some went to the Statue of Liberty. Some went to Danny and Eddie's. And some went to the Empire State Building. We also got our first new kid, a great addition to our grade, William Janover. But it wasn't all fun and games. We learned to write cursive, which none of us can still do. And we lost some real good men out there. Drew Glicker and Spencer Ong left collegiate for the greener pastures of God knows where. We then went to lunch in the third floor cafeteria, came upstairs, and were wonderfully surprised with what the lower school handed us. Miss Dopp, Miss McCauley, Miss Thompson, and Miss Mullis taught us third grade. All were great, but only one gave Doug Glacier the finger. <laughs> we learned our times tables and got separated into 